challenge ng mga housemates. Kasalo kaya ibinigay na ni Kuya ang huling task ng mga housemates para sa linggo ito. Kamusta housemates? Okay lang po, Kuya. Dahil Pia, ikaw ang nanalo sa nakaraang challenge. Ikaw ang magiging leader sa task na ito. Okay po, Kuya. Pia, ang inyong task ay nasa ending. Sa linggong ito, kayo ay inatasan kong talakay ng anatomy ng lymphatic system sa pamamagitan ng video. Hello Philippines and hello world! Matapos ang weekly challenge ng mga housemates, kasalo ko yung ibinigay na ni Kuya ang huling task ng mga housemates para sa linggong ito. Kamustahin muna natin ang mga housemates sa loob ng bahay. Kamusta housemates? Ready na ba kayo sa inyong weekly task? Oh. That's the spirit, housemates. Ngunit bago ang lahat, ating mudang alamin ano nga ba ang lymphatic system. Lymph means water and it describes the fluid that flows through the lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes which make up the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a drainage system that removes excess fluid from the body tissues and returns it into the bloodstream. It also helps defend the body against infection by supplying disease-fighting cells called the lymphocytes. It is actually a subsystem of both the circulatory and immune system. The functions of the lymphatic system or the reasons we need it in the first place are It returns fluid from the tissues back to the heart. It helps large molecules like hormones and lipids enter the blood. And it helps with immune system surveillance to keep infections from running amok. It also absorbs fats and other substances from the digestive tract. And ultimately, it is the house of the body's defenses. The lymphoid tissues and organs house phagocytic cells and lymphocytes, which play essential roles in body defense and resistance to disease. The lymphatic vessels are the network of capillaries and a large network of tubes located throughout their body that transport lymph away from tissues. Lymphatic vessels collect and filter lymph as it continues to move toward larger vessels called collecting drugs. These vessels operate very much like your veins do. They work under very low pressure, have a series of valves in them to keep the fluid moving in one direction. Lymphatic vessels begin as lymphatic capillaries made of overlapping endothelial cells. The overlapping flux function as a one-way valve. The lymph vessels have a one-way valve and muscular walls that contract to force the lymph forward. When fluid accumulates in the tissue, interstitial pressure increases, pushing the flux inward, opening the gaps between cells, allowing fluid to flow. As pressure inside the capillary increases, the endothelial cells are pressed outward closing the gaps, thus preventing backflow. Unlike blood capillaries, the gas in lymphatic capillaries are so large that they allow bacteria, immune cells such as macrophages, and other large particles to enter. This makes the lymphatic system a useful way for large particles to reach the bloodstream. It is used, for example, for dietary fat absorption in the intestine. Once inside lymphatic vessels, the recovered fluid is called lymph. Lymph flow is enabled by the same forces that facilitate blood flow in the veins. It goes from lymphatic capillaries to larger and larger lymphatic vessels and eventually drains into the bloodstream via the subclavian veins. On the way, it passes through a number of lymph nodes which serves as filters Placing the fluid before it reaches the bloodstream. Large lymph vessels are formed by the convergence of many different vessels. There are four sets of paired lymph trunks and one unpaired trunk. The lymph drained by the trunk is received into the lymphatic ducts, which are the terminal vessels of the lymphatic system. The first lymphatic trunk is jugular lymph trunks, located in the neck. The jugular trunk is a lymphatic vessel in the neck. 
It is formed by vessels that emerge from the superior deep cervical lymph nodes and unite the efferents of the inferior deep cervical lymph nodes. It drains the lymph fluid from the cervical lymph nodes of the lymph. Next is the subclavian lymph trunks. Located beneath the clavicle, subclavian trunks are small, short, paired lymphatic trunks. Each one draining its respective upper lip and form from apparent lymphatics draining from the apical subgroup of the axillary ligaments. It drains lymph fluid from the apical lymph nodes around the armpit, which carry lymph from the arms. Next is the bronchomedgestinal lymph trunks, located in the chest. The bronchomedgestinal trunks are lymphatic trunks one on each side of the body. On the left, the bronchomedgestinal trunk is a tributary of the thoracic duct, and on the right, it is a tributary of the right lymphatic duct. It drains lymph fluid from the lungs, heart, trachea, medgestinal, and mammary glands. Next is the lumbar lymph trunks. The lumbar trunks are paired lymphatic trunks the joint to form the cisterna chyla, forming an integral part of the lymphatic system. The lumbar trunks carry lymph from the umbilical abdominal wall, pelvis, and lower limbs. It drains lymph fluid from the legs, pelvic region, and kidneys. <laughs> Lastly, we have the intestinal lymph trunk. The intestinal trunk is an unpaired lymphatic trunk which drains lymph from those portions of the GI tract which receive their blood supply from the cilia and superior mesenteric arteries. In the majority of individuals, the intestinal trunk drains into the left lumbar trunk. Lymphatic ducts empty lymph fluid into the venous system. The two lymphatic ducts of the body are the right lymphatic duct and the thoracic duct. First is the thoracic duct. It is the largest lymphatic vessel in the human body. Around 75% of the lymph from the entire body passes through the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct is the larger of the two lymph ducts of the lymphatic system. It is also known as the left lymphatic duct. A large portion of the body's lymph is collected by this duct and then drained into the bloodstream near the brachial cephalic vein between the internal jugular and the left subclavian veins. It transports up to 4 liters of lymphatic fluid each day. But this process is primarily caused by the breathing action and is assisted by the smooth muscle of the duct. Next is the right lymphatic duct. The right lymphatic duct is a terminal lymphatic vessel located in the neck, anterior to the anterior scalene muscle. It is typically formed by the union of the right bronchomedgestinal, right jugular, and right subclavian lymphatic trunks, although its formation is highly variable. The right lymphatic duct is an important lymphatic vessel. It is because it drains the right upper quadrant of the body. The right lymphatic duct drains the right thorax, upper limb, head, and neck. The tissues and organs that produce, store, and carry white blood cells that fights infections and other diseases are called the lymphatic organs. It includes the bone marrow, spleen, thymus, lymph nodes, tonsils, and Peyer's patches. There are also two classifications of lymphatic organs, the primary and the secondary. Primary lymphatic organs, or also known as the central lymphatic organs, are the production site of the lymphocytes. It provides an environment for stem cells to divide and mature into B and T cells. They are both produced in bone marrow. B cells mature in bone marrow, while T cells mature in the thymus. Bone marrow is a soft, gelatinous tissue that fills the medullary or the centers of bones. There are two types of bone marrow. One is red bone marrow, which is known as myeloid tissue, and yellow bone marrow that is known as fatty tissue. 
Both types of bone marrow are enriched with blood vessels and capillaries. Bone marrow makes more than 220 billion new blood cells every day. Most blood cells in the body develop from cells in the bone marrow. The blood-forming stem cells in red bone marrow can multiply and mature into three significant types of blood cells, each with its own job. Red blood cells or erythrocytes, these blood cells transport oxygen around the body. White blood cells or leukocytes, this helps in fighting infection and disease. White blood cells include lymphocytes, which make up the cornerstone of the immune system. Third one is platelets or thrombocytes. Platelets are fragments of the cytoplasm. Thymus is a soft, roughly triangular organ located in the mediastinum of the thoracic cavity, anterior and superior to the heart, and posterior to the sternum. Thymosin, a hormone secreted by the gland, stimulates the development of T-cells. Lymphocytes produced by the bone marrow are immature T-cells. The gland receives their lymphocytes and develops it to become a functional T-cells, after which it migrates to the lymph nodes to become part of the immune system. The thymus is mainly made up of epithelial cells, immature and mature lymphocytes, and fat tissues that changes in size as you get older. It is large in newborns and toddlers, thus biggest during puberty, then slowly begins to shrink as adulthood approaches. The two thymic lobes are surrounded by a thin connective tissue or the capsule. Each lobe is divided into lobules by a fibrous extensions of capsule called trabeculae or septa that gives the thymus its bumpy appearance. Each lobule has an outer cortex that processes the proliferation and selections of immature T-cells and an inner medulla that consists mature T-cells where the network of reticular endothelial cells are denser and fewer lymphoid cells. Medulla, on cell contains of thymic corpuscles, are technically called Hassel's corpuscles which are oval structures consisting of round worlds of flattened epithelial cells. They are believed to be aged and de degenerated cells. The function of thymus as primary lymphoid organ are to produce sufficient numbers of T-cells expressing unique T-cells receptors and to select T-cells for survival in such a way that the chance for an autoimmune response is minimized. Secondary organs are lymphoid tissues arranged as a series of filters monitoring the contents of extracellular fluids, specifically the lymph tissue and blood. Lymphatic organs also function to support maturation, survival, and activation of lymphocytes. Lymph nodes are the oval bodies situated in the pathways of the lymphatic vessels. In our body, there are about 500 to 600 lymph nodes, and it is most abundant at the cervical, axillary, and inguinal regions as well as the thoracic and abdominal cavities. Now, let us know the functions of the lymph nodes. First, it traps foreign material that comes with the lymph because in case the immunocytes detect a foreign particle in the lymph, they will start the immune response to prevent the harming particle from disseminating throughout the body. Second, it is responsible for the production of lymphocytes and a pool of lymphocytes and a pool of stem cells to become antibody producing B lymphocytes and mature T lymphocytes. Lastly, it filters intercytial fluid collected from soft tissues and eventually returns it to the vascular system and this happens because of the many immune cells found within them. The structure of the lymph node is composed of capsule, subscapular sinus, cortex, medulla, afferent lymphatic vessels, afferent lymphatic vessel, and hilum. Now, let us go on to capsule. The capsule ascends trabeculae inside the lymph node, which pass inward, radiating towards the center. And the subscapular sinus, 
is the space between the capsule and the cortex which allows the transportation of the lymphatic fluid that is also called the lymph fat, the lymph sinus, or the mar marginal sinus. It receives the afferent vessels, continues with the trabecular sinuses, and joins the medullary sinus in the medul medulla of the lymph node. The cortex of the lymph node is a layer beneath the subscapular sinus. The cortex is formed of the outer cortex and the inner part known as the paracortex. The outer cortex layer is also named the B cell layer and it is rich in CXCR5 chemokins and consists mainly of B cells arranged into follicles. The medulla is the innermost layer of the lymph node and contains large blood vessels sinuses, and medullary cords. The medullary cords contain antibodies secreting plasma cells, B cells, and macrophages. The medullary sinuses or sinusoids are vessel-like spaces that separate the medullary cords. The medullary sinus drains the lymph into the afferent lymphatic vessels. And the afferent lymphatic vessel, this mediates the transport of antigen and leukocytes to draining lymph nodes, thereby serving as immunologic communication highways between peripheral tissues and LNS. The afferent lymphatic vessels flow into a lymph node and carry unfiltered lymph fluid. The afferent lymphatic vessels are flowing out of a lymph node and carrying filtered lymph fluid. And the lymph vessels that leave the thymus or spleen, which lack afferent vessels, also fall into this category. And the hilum is a linear, echogenic, non-shadowing structure that contains the nodal vessels and it appears continuous with the fat around the node. Moreover, lymph nodes are kidney-shaped and receive lymph via multiple afferent vessels and filtered lymph then leaves via one or two afferent vessels. They usually range in size from 1 to 2 cm and are enclosed in an adipose tissue capsule. The lymph nodes house lymphocytes and other immune cells. Hello, I'm Pia and I'm going to be discussing about the spleen. We can see it here better in this image with its surrounding structure. The spleen is, in fact, the only immune organ that is directly integrated into the bloodstream. It's a similar in structure to a large lymph node and acts as a filter for the blood. On the left side, we are looking at the diaphragmatic surface of the spleen. Here, we see then on the right side is the visceral surface of the spleen. What is spleen and what does it do? The spleen is the largest immunological organ of your body, measures about 12 cm in length and weighing approximately 150 grams. However, this weight may vary depending on the individual. The spleen is a highly vascularized organ and is purple in shape. It lies interoperitoneally in the left hypochondriac region between the 9th and 12th rib just inferior to the diaphragm. This is surrounded by a layer of a fibroelastic tissue and its main function are associated with immune responses and our body synthesis of antibodies, filtration of blood, and the lymphopoiosis and the phagocytosis, the anatomy of the spleen. The spleen has two borders, superior and inferior, two extremities, posterior and anterior extremities, two surfaces, the visceral one and the diaphragmatic surfaces. So now let's talk about the superior border which you can see here highlighted green. Also known as the upper margin of the spleen, forms the border between the gastric and the diaphragmatic surface. On this margin, on the other hand, you can see highlighted green is the inferior margin of the spleen. It is also known as the lower margin. It is the border between the diaphragmatic and the visceral surface. Now let's take a look on the two extremities of the spleen. 
The anterior extremity of the spleen is basically the most anterior part of this organ. As we can see here, highlighted green. The extremity, the posterior extremity of the spleen, the portion highlighted green is the posterior most end of this organ, which is of course known as the posterior extremity. Now, let's see the surfaces of the spleen. Beside it, this is a cross-section of the spleen done at the helium of the spleen which is found in this image. As you can see, both of this image highlighted in green are the diaphragmatic surfaces of the spleen. It is a convex surface facing the diaphragm. This smooth surface is directly directed upwards and is in relation with the undersurface of the diaphragm. The gastric surface of the spleen, which is found on the visceral surface of the spleen, it can be divided into three subsurfaces. One of this is in this picture the gastric surface of the spleen. As the name indicates, this is a portion of the spleen that is direct contact with the posterior wall of the stomach. This board concave surface, which is directed upwards slightly forward and towards the middle and it is one of the three concave visceral surfaces of the spleen. The next visceral surface is the colic surface of the spleen seen here highlighted green. This surface is in contact with the colon. The spleen sits upon the left colic flexure or the splenic flexure which is the curvature between the transverse colon and the descending colon. The third visceral surface is the renal surface of the spleen, which is seen in this image, highlighted green. This is the lower surface of the spleen that is related to the upper part of the anterior surface of the left kidney. So now we have looked at the borders, extremities, and the surfaces of the spleen. Now let's see how this organ is suspended in the retroperitoneal space. The spleen is surrounded by the peritoneum and the holding of the peritoneum from the two important ligaments, one of these being the gastrosplenic ligament seen here, highlighted in green. The gastrosplenic ligament stretches between the greater curvature of the stomach to the helium of the spleen, which is the area where all of the vessels are found. The ligament formed by the folding of the peritoneum is the splenorenal ligament. This ligament connects the left kidney with the spleen and also the helium of the spleen. In addition, the peritoneum, the spleen is also covered by the fibroelastic connective known as the fibrosplenic capsule. Because the spleen is a very soft organ, this fibrous capsule helps the spleen maintain a relatively constant external sh The splenic artery, highlighted in green, this supplies oxygenated blood to the spleen and this artery is the third branch of the celiac trunk as well as being the largest. And it reaches the splenic helium by passing through the spinorenal ligament. The splenic artery is divided into six branches that enters the spleen at the helium. The next structure is the vein. The splenic vein arises from the helium and drains venous blood from the segmental splenic veins. It courses behind the splenic body, joining the superior mesenteric vein towards the hepatic portal vein. The next structure is the splenic pulp. The splenic pulp is a mesh of fine reticular connective tissue that is found between the retroviculae of the spleen. There are two types of splenic pulp, the red which gives the spleen its soft spongy consistency and it is composed of splenic sinus engorged with cells. There are also splenic cords and marginal zone that borders the white pulp. The function of the red pulp is to act as a mechanical filtration of the blood cells clearing and defective as well as aging erythrocytes. The other type of splenic pulp is the white pulp. This contains aggregations of lymphocytes varying in size that are known as the splenic nodules of malphigian corpuscles or the bodies. This malphigian 
Figgian corpuscles are composed of P lymphocytes rich lymphoid follicle and the T lymphocytes rich in periarterular lymphocytes sheet known as the pulse. The function of the white pulp is to facilitate an active immune responses through the hormonal and cell mediated pathways. The next structure is known as the tuberculae of the spleen. These are connective tissues partitions that extend from the helium and fibrous capsule penetrating into the spleen and dividing the splenic tissues into small chambers. These small chambers contain small vessels which are the tuberculae, arteries, and veins. All these dots, as highlighted green, there are the trabeculae arteries, which are small branches of splenic arteries and are transmitted through the splenic pulp. They are ensheathed by the lymphatic aggregations of white pulp. These vessels are extremely ramified, has many branches. Next, we have the pharyngeal lymphatic ring, also known as the Waldeyer's ring. This is located here within the blue circles and is the name given to the group of structures more commonly known as your tonsils. The tonsil include the adenoid, the tubal tonsil, palatine tonsil, and the lingual tonsil. Together, they form the Waldeyer's ring, the ring of lymphoid tissues. The Waldeyer's ring include the pharyngeal tonsil, which are the highest of the structure highlighted here in green, as well as the palatine tonsil, which are highlighted here. Because of their location, their, this tonsil can be relatively easy to see yourself, as you can see in this picture. And finally, the lingual tonsil, which are located at the back of the tongue, as we see in this picture, the lowest structure highlighted. FYI, the lingual means tongue. Another example of a lymphoid tissue is the Peyer's patches, in which it appears as a roughly egg-shaped lymphatic nodule, so it is a group of well-organized lymphoid follicles located in the lamina propria and submucosa of the distal portion of the small intestine, the ileum and jejunum, and sometimes in the duodenum. That is why Peyer's patches belong to a class of non-encapsulated lymphatic tissue. Its function is to monitor the intestinal bacteria, populations, and also prevents growth of pathogenic bacteria in the intestines. Lymphatic system is closely associated with cardiovascular system, so here we have the heart. These green arrows on top represent the movement of fluid from the cardiovascular system to lymphatic system. So once this fluid enters the lymphatic system, that fluid is now called lymph. Lymph is picked up by these structures here called lymphatic capillaries, merging lymphatic capillaries to form large structures called lymphatic vessels. Along the pathway of lymphatic vessels, we have structures that clean the lymph called lymph nodes. Then merging lymphatic vessels from larger vessels called lymphatic ducts and lymphatic ducts returns or recycles lymph back to the cardiovascular system through veins.